Ichi, an unhinged, manipulated, and sexually repressed serial killer on the loose, gradually tears his way through the Yakuza underground of Shinjuku, under the belief that he is purging the world of bullies. Kakihara, on the rise as a Yakuza leader, seeks his missing Yakuza boss, Anjo, who he discovers to have been murdered by Ichi, and Kaneko, an ex-cop fired for losing his gun on the job, attempts to redeem himself as a loyal bodyguard to the Yakuza, but is often belittled and bullied himself, causing intense frustration that he cannot prove himself worthy to anybody, each character intermingling in a kinetic frenzy of complex hyperviolence and disorganised criminality that leads to their climactic collision. This is Takashi Miike's Ichi the Killer, adapted from Hideo Yamamoto's manga series of the same title, a frantic expression of gory brutality in the form of a Yakuza crime comedy thriller. Takashi Miike's reputation for violence is retained here, as Ichi the Killer brings such heightened levels of gore that it's absurd. An abusive pimp is sliced down the middle into two, a spectacle expectant of violent anime. Yakuza boss Anjo's evisceration leads to an apartment room looking completely unrecognisable. The blade hidden within Ichi's boot slices and dices when he instinctively kicks out in frustration, crying as he murders. Takashi Miike has used violence in such an inventive manner within the film that it only adds to Ichi the killer's unpredictability. It's grotesque and shocking, but there's a strange morbid alert in awaiting to see what else the film holds. While Takashi Miike's directing style has been frenetic in the past, with films such as the coked up criminality of Dead or Alive, and the chaotic blurring of subconscious thought with memories in audition, Miike takes Ichi the Killer to new chaotic heights, playing with the unreliability of Ichi's memory like it's a distorted VHS tape. Whether all of his memories are planted and manipulated by Ichi's boss Gigi could be speculated upon, and presenting the height of his uncontrolled controllable sadness and fury in a disorienting, dizzying blur between real time and slow motion, between clear-cut imagery and long exposure distortion, Ichi is a dangerous, vulnerable, yet violent young man, and Takashi Miike uses his distinct directing style to such an accelerated excess to create the chaotic headspace that Ichi lives with. Outside of hyperviolence and a visual style that swerves closer to experimental than his previous films, Takashi Miike also manages to balance the unsettling with a brilliant sense of humour. For example, an intense scene contains Kakihara torturing a Yakuza member, Suzuki, which he suspects of kidnapping Anjo, the Yakuza boss, after Gigi provides a deceptive lead. Suzuki is hung from the ceiling, hooks piercing his back, and is further tortured by Kakihara piercing Suzuki's cheeks and underneath his chin with his needles, before pouring boiling tempura oil over his back. It's unsettling how extreme this demonstration of violence is, Gigi watching quietly unless prompted. As more Yakuza burst in, demanding Kakihara stops, they ask who told him it was acceptable to torture Suzuki. When everyone turns to Gigi, Gigi's disappeared, one step ahead of the criminals. Amidst the confusion, Takashi Miike finds humour in the incompetence of the Yakuza, so disorganised for such supposed organised criminals. Humour is found in the fact that somebody should have been watching Gigi, yet nobody was, as well as the awkwardness that springs from the confusion and grave mistake that Kakihara and his gang of men Masterfully, Takashi Miike showcases that, after disturbing the audience with a shocking sight of torture, he can also make the audience laugh too with a sense of humour that punches up at the idiocy of criminals. It's an impressive contrast. Ichi, while a titular character and protagonist, is not necessarily likeable. He is sexually aroused at the sight of vulnerable women being abused and degraded, connecting these moments to traumatic memory when he experienced a schoolgirl being raped, and he felt powerful powerless to stopping it, while Gigi in a later scene admits that this memory was planted in Ichi's head by him after Ichi had murdered his own parents, a manipulative tactic in which Gigi uses it as leverage and motivation for Ichi to kill Yakuza gangs for Gigi's own benefit. This fictional memory still causes Ichi a mixture of great distress and sexual awakening. Ichi is a character of internal conflict, he knows rape and murder are terrible actions, clearly upset by his own actions, and yet 
under Gigi's manipulation, Ichi acknowledges that to rid the world of bad people, bad people must die. He is a character with no sense of control, and it is that lack of control which excites antagonist Kakihara so much. Kakihara is a man who enjoys pain, a man who gains sexual gratification from masochism, and with the murder of his Yakuza boss Anjo, Kakihara has an underlying desire to have his craving for pain matched. As the film unravels, Kakihara concludes that the only one to bring a satisfying death would be the elusive Ichi. This makes their climactic collision on a rooftop all the more exciting. Kakihara is an evil, sadistic man who gains pleasure from torturing others, showing no remorse, treating innocent people as collateral damage to get what he wants. Ichi therefore must kill him. The unpredictability of Ichi gives Kakihara a playful sense of fear. Ichi is incapacitated by a bullet from Kaneko's gun, as Kaneko attempts to prove himself worthy of protecting Kakihara, leading to Ichi killing Kaneko before he falls to the floor, kicked in the ribs by Kaneko's young son Takeshi, a young boy who has witnessed something traumatic. The fact that Ichi is incapacitated leads to an amusing momentary disappointment. Kakihara wanted to be killed by the elusive local legend Ichi, and yet when witnessing Ichi's true emotionally unstable self, Kakihara is frustrated. Kakihara deafens himself by piercing his eardrums with his needles, to which he realises Ichi has picked himself up and decapitated Takeshi. Ichi swipes the blade of his boot into the forehead of Kakihara, before flinging him onto the railing of a stairway, causing Kakihara to fall backwards to his death. However, this is an unreliable recollection, as the swipe to Kakihara's forehead is confirmed to be a fantasy when Gigi examines Kakihara's body, revealing there is no such cut to his forehead. The reality is that Ichi continues to be kicked by Takeshi, causing such disappointment in Kakihara that Kakihara likely took his own life in a manner that would satisfy him. Not too dissimilar to planting false memories into Ichi's mind, Kakihara lived out his own satisfying fantasy for his own death. Gigi hangs himself from a tree in a nearby park, likely due to the weight of his own actions, and a shot shows a man resembling Ichi from behind, but as he turns around Ichi's face is replaced with Takeshi, likely an allusion to Takeshi's potential to go down a path similarly violent and dysfunctional to Ichi's. After experiencing a traumatic reality in witnessing the murder of his father, using this interpretation of the final sequence, there is implication that the reign of violence could continue if Takeshi isn't offered the necessary support needed after witnessing such a traumatic event. Ichi the killer's ending can be overwhelming on an initial viewing, but breaking it down into easier to understand fragments can make it more accessible to process. In conclusion, with all the flustering chaos of Ichi the killer, from its genuine displays of horrific violence, to the darkly comical displays of comedy, and even the displays of violence so exaggerated that they seem intended for humorous effect, Takashi Miike is expecting the viewer to move and process these images at the breakneck speed of his film's pacing. Ichi the killer may just be one of Takashi Miike's most focused Yakuza flicks. With a sense of style that further develops his already established distinct approach to filmmaking, but Ichi the killer also explores fascinating characterization. A difficult protagonist conflicted in his actions but unable to stop. An ex-cop turned humiliated bodyguard, wishing to show the same condolences he received at his lowest point. And a Yakuza boss who longs for the ex-mob boss turned cadaver, with allusions to homoeroticism in how he is desperate for the violent attention he previously received from his mob boss. Ichi the killer is a complex cacophony of comic pain and disturbing abuse, often overwhelming and never dull. Few extreme films can compare to the morbid gratification of Ichi the Killer. A special thank you to my super Patreon supporter, Gil.